All right, what's up? We're just going to revisit these probability rules again. We're going to talk about or, which is a union. We're going to talk about and, which is the overlap, and given information. And this is when you change the denominator, okay? So you're not talking about um, all houses. De I wrote demon. I meant denom. Ah. All right, so... Um, what are the probability rules? Let's consider, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about households, okay? And when we think about households, we're gonna consider 20 households. And um, in those 20 households, hold on a second, can I? Uh... All right, I was just messing around with that thing for a second, so I can put this here. So we're gonna consider 20 households and the households either have a dog or a cat or the households have both. And we're gonna look at those to think about what a bunch of different probabilities are and then connect those to the rules that are given on the AP test. So there's a couple probability rules that are handed to you. And just to understand the notation and see that these things actually do work, and we're gonna finish it off by talking about independence. All right, so that's kind of where we're going in this. So here we have 20 households, whether or not they have a cat or a dog, a yes or no for dog, yes or no for cats. Let's put the totals in here because you always wanna put the totals. Um, so uh, five and two is seven. 13, 5 and 3 is 8, 12, these two add to 20, these guys add to 20, so we're all set. Good, that's cool. Um, now, what you want to double check is, um, hold on, you want to check that these add up and these guys add up to 20, so they should go across here and they should add this way also. Um, now, what we're going to do is we'll just think about what all these means. This means that out of the 20 households, 7 have a cat, 13 don't have a cat. Out of the 20 households, 12 don't have a dog, eight do have a dog, all right? And that's what this means. Now, if I go inside here, there are five that have both a dog and a cat. There are two that have a cat, but no dog. There are three that have a dog, but no on the cat. And there are 10 that neither have a cat nor dog. Now, sometimes you'll see these drawn in a Venn diagram. Well, they'll draw it like this, they'll have uh, dog over here and then cat over here and sometimes they'll show you the totals overall you know that there's eight dogs and all and then seven cat in all houses with cats they draw a nice Venn diagram which has two circles overlapping and in here are those houses that have cats and dogs which are five over here would be those that have cats but no dog and the ones that have cats but no dog are two dogs but no cats which are three and then out here there are ten in all so you can look at it this way too where these are the seven that have cats these are the eight that have dogs and those are the ten that have neither and the five that have both so let's just quickly look and see if we can figure out the probabilities just by looking at these that are asked for here um so i want to say what's the probability overall a house has a dog well out of all the houses there are eight that have dogs out of all 20. And the probability that a random house chosen has a cat, there are 7 out of 20, 7 out of 20. What's the probability a random house has a cat and a dog? Okay, that means they have both. That would be here. 5 out of the 20 houses have both. And this one says the probability of a cat or a dog. Well, these guys have neither. These guys have, these guys have a cat. These guys have both. So it's all of these guys all together. So two and five and three, these are the people that have at least a cat or a dog. So it'll be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So half the houses have a cat or a dog. This is saying, what's the probability of the houses with dogs that they has a cat? So I'm telling you, it's given. I'm saying, hey, this house has a dog. Now of those with dogs, now it's changed the denominator to just the houses with dogs, which are just these eight. Of these eight houses, of those eight, how many have cats? Five. Now, this is saying of the cats, of the houses with cats, what's the likelihood that there's dogs? Well, how many have cats? There's seven, and there's five out of all. Now, these are all the houses with cats. Five out of the seven um, have dogs. That's what that's asking. Now, this is the basic symbolism, all right, we're talking about. But what we're going to do is look at a couple formulas. The first one is the general addition formula. It's given to you. Um, it's given to you on the AP test, general addition. And the general addition formula looks like this. It says the probability of A or B happening. Now, or means and or both. So it means A or B or 
A and B, okay? The way you find that is you add the probability of A to the probability of B, but then you subtract the intersection of A and B. Now, why are we doing that subtraction? We're going to look at that right now again. We saw it in the previous videos, but we're going to think about it again. Um, I'll put this in cats and in terms of cats and dogs. So not cats and dogs, probability of cats plus the probability of dogs minus the probability of cat and dog. And we'll see why. Now you may think, well, what's the likelihood of this or that? Well, you may be thinking, well, couldn't I just add cats and dogs? So couldn't I just add those things both? Well, let's see. If I just started out finding it and I said, what's the probability of cats? So I'm going to cats or dog. If I add just the probability of cats, which we know cats is 7 out of 20, plus the probability of dogs, which is 8 out of 20, what we're adding is, is this 7 plus this 8. And if you notice, there's an overlap. I counted this guy twice. So this 5 is part of the 7 and part of the 8. So if I add these up, if I counted it twice, I overcounted it once. So that's why I have to subtract the overlap. I have to subtract the overlap minus the 5 out of 20 because that 5 was in both of these. So when I add that up, 7 and 8 is 15 minus 5 gives me my 10 out of 20, which is exactly what I want, cat or dog, 10 out of 20. Okay. So that's the general addition formula. It's given to you. It Basically, if you add these guys and these guys together, you added this one twice. So that's the general probability rule. Now, next thing, briefly, um, I want to talk about another formula that's given to you. It's the given formula, but it's a manipulation of the general multiplication rule. And this is the given formula. The given formula looks like this. The probability of A given B, probability of A given B, so if you know B, what's the probability of A happening, is the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Now, that's handed to you. So if we're going to translate this to cats and dogs so it makes sense here, let's just see if this holds true. Does the probability of having a cat given having a dog equal the probability of having a cat and dog? over the probability of having a dog? Let's see. Well, what did we find out? What was the likelihood of cat and dog? Well, if I go up again, cat and dog was 5 out of 20. Probability of having dog overall was 8 out of 20. Well, 5 over 20 divided by 8 over 20 is 5 over 20 times multiplied by the reciprocal. Multiplication, I mean, division is flip and multiplication, so I flip. 20s reduce, I get 5 eighths. Is that the probability of cat given dog? Well, probability of cat given dog, yes, was 5 eighths. So it holds true. Now, a quick manipulation of this turns it into the general multiplication. So if I multiply both sides of this thing by probability of B, this side, the probability of B cancels out and probability of B comes over here, and I end up with probability of a and b equals the probability of b times the probability of a given b, um, which is the and, which is the general multiplication rule. Now this can be rearranged because a and b is commutative. You could put the a here, then b a. So you can often you'll see this like this. Basically, it's the product of A and the product of B, knowing that A is true, gives you the A and B. It's the general um, multiplication rule. Now, you can use that um, to find out the probability of A and B, and, and it will work also if you go up here and try it with any of these. Um, so, uh, that's that. So, um, let's move on to just checking for independence quickly. There are two forms. Actually, you know, let me just do a run-through of this just so you can so you can see that it happens. So, if I did probability of dog and cat equals the probability of dog times the probability of cat given dog. Let's just see if it works out. What is the probability of dog overall? 8 twentieths. What's the probability of cat given dog? 5 eighths. The eighths cancel out, giving me 5 twentieths. And guess what? That is the probability of dog and cat. So it does hold true. All right. Now, 
There are two formulas we're going to use to check for independence. So we're going to check for independence two ways. We don't have to use both, but there are two formulas. If either of these are true, then the things that we're talking about, the variables are independent. All right. So um, the two formulas you generally see are this one. There's one that's uh, the probably if you find out the probability of A stays the same when you know B is true, then we say A and B are independent. Or if you find out that the probability of A times the probability of B is the same thing as A and B happening at the same time, then you also know that they're independent. So if these things are true, then A and B are independent. So for here, we'll just check to see if owning ownership of dogs or cats are independent in this example. So is cat ownership and dog ownership, is this true? C and D in this case or in this neighborhood? Well, let's see. Let's see, is the probability of having a dog the same knowing that it's cat? Or the other thing we'll say is the probability of having a dog times the probability of having a cat equal the probability of having a cat and dog? Those are the questions we're asking. If they're true, then we'll say dog ownership and cat ownership are independent. If they're not true, then we'll say they're not independent, which means there's an association. So we'll check. What is the probability of having a dog or owning a dog overall? Right at the top, we said, well, it's 8 out of 20. Okay, so 8 out of 20 households have a dog. And what was the likelihood if the house has a cat that they also have a dog? Well, if they have a cat, the likelihood they are is 5, 7. So if they have a cat, 5 out of the 7. So notice, this is less than half. So a random house, less than half the random houses have a, have a dog, right? But if they own a cat, five-sevenths, well over half. So having a cat, actually, if you know a house has a cat, now you're more likely to have a dog. These are not equal, and because they're not equal, it is not independent. So we say there is an association. And you'll notice it worked the same thing here. We're going to find out these aren't equal, too. So this, this is another way we could have shown it not independent. Probability of having a dog overall, we saw, was 8 twentieths. Cat was 7 twentieths. Is that the same as cat and dog, which we knew was 5 twentieths? No way. Look at 8 times 7 is 56 over 400. If I multiply this by this, is that the same thing as 100 over 400? Not the same thing. No. Because they're not equal, we say they are not independent. What would independence look like, you ask? Well, let's go to another street. Let's look at 20 other houses, and I'll show you an example of two streets that are actually independent. So independence will look a little bit different, all right? So let's take a look. Um, here's another neighborhood. We have the same thing. We have cats and dogs. Do you own a dog? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Do you have a cat? Yes, I do. No, I don't. And we set it up like this. So in another neighborhood with 20 houses, we'll see uh, if I go across, I get 12, 8, 6, 15. They add to 20 households in all. And you can find out all the other probabilities, but you'll notice, hey, let's check with the two probability formulas. What's the probability of owning a cat? Is it the same if I know that house has a dog in it? Let's see. Well, overall, what's the likelihood someone has a cat? Well. 12 out of 20. 12 out of 20. Okay, what about if I know that there's a dog in the house? Well, of the houses that have dogs, of these six, oh, sorry, that's five, sorry, added them wrong. Of these five, three, four, five, five, three out of the five. Are those fractions equal? Well, yeah, this reduces to this. If I Take this guy and I divide this guy by 4 and divide that by 4. Guess what? 12 over 20 is 0.6 is 0.6 of the same fraction. They're both 3 fifths. So, yes, C and D are independent. Meaning, what we're saying is, notice, 3, fi three fifths um, is the same thing as 12 twentieths. 60% of those with dogs have cats, right? Guess what? 60% overall. Have. And you can do it the other way, too. What about the other way? Uh, let's see. Is the probability of having a dog the same if you know that the house has a cat? Let's see. Um, well, probability of having a dog overall, 
uh, having a dog overall is five out of 20 have dogs, five out of 20, which is 20.25, 25%. What if I know that house has a cat? Well, there's 12 houses with cats. Oh, three out of 12, that's also 25%, meaning knowing it has a cat didn't change the likelihood of, um, of it having a dog, of uh, the house having a dog. So pretty interesting. Now, um, what else? What's the other form? Oh, the other form is this. What's Does the probability of having a cat times the probability of having a dog equal the probability of having a cat and a dog? Well, let's see. Uh, what is the probability of having a cat and a dog overall? It's three out of the 20. Does that equal the probability of having a cat times the probability of having a dog? Well, how many have a cat? 12 out of 20. How many have a dog? Five out of 20. Does 12 20th times 5 20th equal 3 20th? Let's find out. 12 times 5 is 60 over 400. And I'll multiply this guy by 20 over 20 to get 400. Ah, 60 out of 400. Yes. So in this case, on this street or in this neighborhood, C and D are independent. Okay, so we can show that they're independent there. So we checked them two ways. Hopefully that was a good review for you of independence and the basic probability rules, but really it's getting that notation down. I'm hoping you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with this stuff. Um, don't freak out over it. Just some new, uh, the new way to look at things and think about things, but you can do it. Stick to it. Do your homework and have a great day. Adios.